I've got my rendered uh, animated sequence out of Cinema 4D. I've used the alpha channel and put my own custom color in the background just by using a solid from the layers new solid panel or menu. And um, I've downloaded a little cartoony sound effect that I'm going to add to this just to give it a little bit more life. So I'm going to right click in my project bin to import my sound. So I'm going to go file, uh, I'm just going to go import, import file, and I'm going to pick uh, the sound which is in my downloads folder. Here it is, cartoon space age effect, open. Okay, so if I want to add sound to my composition, all I need to do is drag and drop it into the composition. Now, sound obviously is not a visual thing, so in terms of the layers in the composition, it doesn't really matter where it sits in that stack of layers. Just for kind of tidiness' sake, I always put my sounds at the bottom. Really doesn't make a difference as long as they're in there. One thing I can see as well is that this composition that I've created in After Effects, it's the same length as my 3D animation out of Cinema 4D. And I know that because when I created this composition, the way I did it was I took that footage from Cinema and uh, I dragged and dropped it onto the new composition button so it used the resolution, the frame rate, and the duration of my sequence. If I look at my timeline, I can see that my sound effect only actually goes about three quarters of the way through my, um, my movie. Um, that's not really a problem for me because I can see all my animation is completed by that point. Now, if you want to preview your movie file in After Effects, put your cursor at the start of the sequence and hit zero on your keypad. One thing that's different about After Effects is it doesn't really work in real time. If you've used Premiere and edited film, for example, you know that that kind of works in real time. You can just hit spacebar, everything plays. After Effects, because of the way it works, doesn't really do that. So you have to you have to generate or render a preview, and you do that by hitting zero on your keypad. If you have 50 layers with loads of different graphics and all sorts of effects, that preview might take quite a while. For something like this, which is very simple, it's almost instant. So that's a good sh uh, shortcut to know, is the zero key on your keypad will render a preview of your screen and play it back. Okay, that's fine, I'm happy with that. It's very simple, but we've shown that we can now put audio into After Effects, into our movie files. Okay, so we're ready to render this now. Um, it's a work of art, I'm very happy with it. Um, can't wait to put it in my showreel. It's all done, so we've got all our renders done, all our layers in, we've got our sound effects in, so now we're going to use Media Encoder to turn all of this in After Effects into a nice contained movie file. So the way that we do that is by clicking somewhere in our composition timeline, just to make sure that it's highlighted. Go up to our composition menu, and we're going to add it to the media encoder queue. So you can render movie files out of After Effects, but media encoder does a better job. It's more efficient, if you're interested in file sizes, it does a better job of shrinking file sizes while maintaining good quality. Um, there's a bunch of other reasons, but um, it's just it's a really handy tool to use. So we're going to add this to the media encoder queue. Now, nothing will happen once we've done that, but if you open up media encoder, because we've already opened it, if we give it a few seconds, and it might take a little while, apologies, it is kind of slow, we should eventually get our project to appear in Media Encoder. Now, if you hadn't opened Media Encoder beforehand, it will open it for you automatically and start adding uh, whatever you've clicked on into the, um, into the queue here. Now, generally what happens when I'm doing this is I get impatient and I think uh, it's probably lost the connection somewhere. So I'm going to do it again. So if I go back to After Effects, go Composition, oops, make sure I've selected my composition first, Composition, add to media encoder queue, and then when I go back to media encoder, usually there's two versions of it there because I've just been impatient and it adds it in twice. 
Sometimes it adds it in more times than that. Just sometimes it is very slow. Actually, the other thing, if it's not working, the other thing that um, you want to check that I haven't done is I haven't saved my After Effects project. Oh, there we go. Meter Encoder has suddenly decided to work, and there's my file there. But um, I hadn't saved my project. Obviously, that's not vital, but um, you probably should get in the habit of saving it anyway before you do this. Oop, wrong button. Okay, back to Meteor Encoder Q. Okay, so I'm just going to delete one of these instances here because I pressed the button twice. Yes, I want to delete that. So what Meteor Encoder does is it just takes all that information from After Effects, it renders all that stuff, it combines it all together, and turns it into a movie file of a format of our choice. If we go to the Format section, there's a little wee down arrow. If we click on that, we've got a whole bunch of very confusing and cryptic kind of letters and numbers and formats. What we're going to mostly render for our final movies is this format called H.264. Just out of interest, anyone heard of this before? A couple of you? Yeah. It's a pretty standard kind of digital video format. Things like YouTube and Vimeo and um, Blu-ray discs use this as a digital movie format. I don't want to talk too much more about it right now because it all gets very boring and very complicated very quickly. The important thing is this is a good delivery system to give to people as a final movie. Under the presets to the right of that, we want to use a setting called match source so that matches the source settings and a high bit rate means high quality. So if it's not set there already, go to match source, high bit rate. You can notice if you do click that arrow, there's a whole bunch of presets for different types of delivery mediums, YouTube, Vimeo, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to use match source, high bit rate. That's going to give us a high quality movie. The other thing that's important is we need to choose where this movie is going to be saved. If you click on that next bit of text, it will open a browser, eventually, that lets you choose where you want to save it. I'm going to save mine um, on the desktop in that MoText render folder that I made earlier. MoText movie. Okay, so we've set H.264 as our movie format. The preset is to, to match our original composition at a high bit rate, which is high quality, and we've set where we're going to save it to. Once we've done that, there's a little play button to the top right. If we click that, yes, we're rendering again. Because our movie and our composition in After Effects is pretty simple, we've got a really short bit of animation, we've got a solid color and a bit of sound, this render should be pretty quick once it starts. Mine's nearly done, and that was pretty quick. Once that's done, we should have our final movie. Let's just check on my desktop folder, in my MoGraph or MoTeX render folder, MoTeX movie. Let's check it out. Is it going to play? It's a little slow. Yay, it worked. Excellent. Okay.